95% of inmates serving time in California prisons will at some point be released. Two-thirds will reoffend and be back in prison within three years. But now there's a push within the prison system to change that, and the solution could be found more than 5,000 miles away. Our Itai Ha joins us now with that story. Itai. Good evening, guys. Yeah, until the 90s, Norway ran its prison system much like the U.S. with little success. The recidivism rates were at about 70%. But then the Norwegian Correctional Service decided to try something different, inject more humanity into their prisons. It seems to be working. Their recidivism rates dropped from 70 to 20 percent. Now prisons around the world are sending officials to Scandinavia to see how it can be adapted in their facilities. One of those prisons is Salinas Valley, a level four maximum security prison about three hours south of San Francisco. We do have a lot of violence on this yard. Fights, batteries. Matter of fact, we had a murder in that housing unit just a month and a half ago. They did CPR on a guy right out here in the yard, and he was pronounced dead. There isn't much Ed Borla hasn't seen in his 25 years in California's criminal justice system. First, as a corrections officer, and now as the deputy chief warden at Salinas Valley State Prison. As the second in command here, he's in charge of about 3,000 inmates. A level four maximum security prison, Salinas houses some of the state's most violent offenders, including rapists and murderers. But these days, it's leading the way when it comes to prison reform. Inmates come back in multiple times, uh, revolving door. So we got in there. All right, I was worried about you. For decades, the American prison system has been focused on punishment and deterrence. But now, Borla says, it's going through a sea change. I forget when it was, what, the 80s when we did uh, lock them all up and throw away the key. Um, and then over time, we learned that that wasn't working. While the U.S. has 5% of the world's population, it has 25% of its prisoners. The cost to taxpayers, $80 billion a year, which is why Borla and his team are testing out an approach used in Norway, where the recidivism or relapse rate is at 20 percent, compared to about 75 percent in the U.S. We're a pilot program for it, and it's just basically inserting humanity into the prison system. The idea is simple. The punishment should be the loss of freedom, not the loss of dignity. One of the biggest changes, addressing prisoners by their names rather than their number. Guards here also make a point to get to know them better, playing board games and taking them on long walks. This is the living room for the inmates. It's still a far cry from the Norwegian model, where inmates live in cells that have been described as dorms and prisons have state-of-the-art amenities. I wish I fly like a bird including a recording studio. There are no plans for anything like that here anytime soon. The program is still in its infancy. For now, Borla and his team are focusing on what they can do with a little they have, adding more classes and activities. Put your hands together. The prison says it's already seeing a decline in one key measure, attempted suicides. Namaste. Namaste. More importantly, prisoners say they've noticed a difference. Terence Ford is here for an armed carjacking, which landed him in prison for 26 years to life. He says the new approach has given him something you'd be hard pressed to find in a maximum security prison. This is the first time we've ever had action that truly showing our humanity instead of just our mistakes. It's tempting to chalk it all up to progressiveness run amok. But according to Borla, at the end of the day, this is not just good for the prisoners and the prison, but society as a whole. Someday these guys are gonna get out. We don't want these guys not having the ability to be successful. The hope is to prepare inmates for life after they get out, moving away from managing prisoners to creating good neighbors. How long did it take Norway to get from 
a 70% recidivism rate to 20%. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Yeah, yeah. they started in the 90s, so it took them a, a while. It's it took them decades. a few years. Okay. Yeah, and that's one of the things that they're going to be looking at here is how long is it going to take it here? To get to that what are the here. basic principles? In yeah, Norway's so like, approach? like we said in the piece, basically the idea is the loss of so your your punishment is the loss of freedom, not the loss of dignity. Mm -hmm. So essentially, once you make it into the prison, it's all about rehabilitation. So in Norway, you have prisoners who are wearing their own clothes. They cook in communal kitchens, they walk about unaccompanied, they play sports, they So they work. still feel like human beings instead right. of just inmates. Exactly. The idea is that life inside should resemble life outside as much as possible. So when they do come out, and 95% of these people are expected to come out at some point, that there won't be such a shock to the system. And this is a three-part series. What can we expect in part two? Yeah, so in part two, we're going to be looking at how Salinas Valley is helping prisoners uh, face their trauma, the trauma that they believe landed them in prison to begin with, and then they do that with something called a compassion circle, and so they put all of these prisoners in a big circle and they face their trauma, and the idea there, again, is that if you face your trauma, if you know where that trauma is coming from, then those recidivism rates will also go down eventually.